Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, it is a great day for the members of this chamber who are here with their family and friends to make official the electoral victories from this past November. Congratulations to each of you on your hard-fought victories that brought you here to this point today. Mr. President, the electoral victories by everyone on the ballot this past November were not easy. They required countless hours of phone calls, literature drops, events, and so much more. Think back to that time spent away from family, no vacations, missed birthdays, and more. But why did we do it? Why did we all run for public office? We are all here to do what is in the best interest of our respective districts and constituents and to leave our Commonwealth in a better place than we found it. I think if you surveyed the 25 members of this chamber who ran last year, and for that matter, all 49 of us who are elected here today, that is the common theme. And the voters for the 22nd consecutive cycle returned a majority of Republicans to this chamber. And while we ran as Republicans or Democrats, Today, here in this chamber, we are all Pennsylvanians first. In order to successfully put Pennsylvania first and achieve the greatest good for the people of our Commonwealth, it will take strong leadership, steady guidance, a thoughtful approach, and someone with a proven track record of delivering results. I will be the first to admit that the last two and a half years, they have been very challenging. As legislators, we have been met with some of the most difficult obstacles no one of us could have predicted. Yet we were resilient and met those challenges by positioning Pennsylvania to be on a better, stronger path for the future prosperity. We governed through those challenging times, and it took a special kind of leadership to do that. That type of leadership was displayed by the floor leader, the gentle lady from Westmoreland County, time and time again. Despite our partisan disagreements, I would venture to guess that more bills were passed with either unanimous support or near unanimous support over the last two years than bills on strictly party line votes. Just look through the papers and TV stories and look at some of the new laws that are going into effect this month due to bills that we passed last session. Republican bills, Democratic bills, all with strong support from this chamber. And it was her unique approach that moved this chamber from transactional to transformational for the greater good of the people of this Commonwealth. It was under her leadership that temporary emergency regulations during the pandemic made for our health care sector were finally made permanent. She fought to fund our essential services in state government while ensuring fiscal responsibility to build up a rainy day fund within our budget to protect the people of this Commonwealth from future economic uncertainty. And she fought hardest to give the people the ultimate say in how they want to be governed during challenging times. Despite divided government with a Republican General Assembly and a Democratic governor, our last budget was completed in early July, which is no small feat. We agree more than the press wants to lead our constituents to believe, and that is because of common sense, compromise, and collegiality that are the hallmarks of this body's governance. In order for the Senate to remain transformational and govern effectively to achieve the common good for the people of Pennsylvania, I can think of no one better to lead this body than my dear friend from Westmoreland County, someone who has been known for shattering the glass ceiling a time or two in the Senate of Pennsylvania.
and so it is my distinct honor to place into nomination the name of Kim Ward for the office of President Pro Temporary. Thank you, Mr. President.